Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We right. have Craig and Stevie here. Well, we coughed all the way through that. <laughs> Craig's got a cough Where again. Come from? You only got coughed all, all day. Yeah, tickly cough. Yeah, a hundred day cough, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it went away. It came back. It came back. <laughs> to say hello. Uh, Frank Leboff is with us as well, yeah. Our director's saying you need a little bit of lemon. Yeah, with some whiskey on it. <laughs> yeah, you won't say no to that. And All hurry. right. Uh, and let's get the questions up then. I've not got them in front of me, but we'll read them. I'm bitter enough. Ah, oh, bitter enough. There we go. Uh, let's uh, What have we got to do? Desperate not to agree with you there, by the way. Oh, here we go. First question, have you ever seen a team shut off as often as Manchester United and is that more of a reflection on the manager or the players? Stevie. Players. Absolutely, players. Set, set pieces against everybody has a job, but everybody's job is to be alert for anything that's happening or anything that they think may happen. That's the, that, that's the rules. But in this game, not one Manchester United player was alert, and not one of them clearly was watching what was happening. I mean, just um, it's, it's about as unprofessional as it gets. Craig and Frank, be honest. If you were fans at Stamford Bridge today, <coughs> would you have left the game early when Manchester United had the lead? Go on, Frank. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. Um, I always want to see uh, until the end of it. I don't, never understood that. If you want to come to, to, to watch a game, you know, um, go till the end. I mean, that's, uh, the, that's what it is. And you have to accept to lose a game. And, uh, but yeah, no, I would have stayed. Craig? Well, I wouldn't have been there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was a fan, which I is a lot of people obviously love going. That's what they do. They, they, they've been doing it for years, a lot of them. And travel home and away, all these supporters, it's quite amazing the passion they have for it, but I understand and to an extent sometimes when people leave, but when it's tight, I can do I can, I can see it when it's four or five now. You know, a team's getting battered, they go, oh, but, yeah. but when you have a chance, like Chelsea fans have left thinking, how the hell are we get beaten by this, this Man United side, you know what I mean, at home, blah, 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 with all their injuries. And then all of a sudden, there's some great story at the end, for Chelsea anyway, and you've missed it. Now, the only thing that's... The only saviour is if you're in the pub early and the bar's not... Be, and you get to, <laughs> and you, you get you get a quick pint in, you know, just to just to help. But, no, I, I, I don't get it when it's... Maybe it's travel for some of them, I don't know. Tubes, last tube, travel, I don't know. Stevie, you got away with answering this one in the main show. Why didn't Virgil van Dijk receive a red card? I don't know. <laughs> I've got to at the time. <laughs> at the time when, I watch, when I'm watching the game, I'm thinking, he's in trouble here. You can't grab anybody by the throat. So, I guess the only thing I can say is, this game was at Anfield. If this had been away from home, I think we're possibly looking at something else. I mean, yeah, I can't, I can't, <coughs> I can't talk my way out. Um, I can't honestly turn round and say to him, if I'm his coach and he comes in, I'm going to say to him, by the way, you just got away with one, because you can't touch anybody, you can't put your hands around anybody's throat. But, that's the only defence I've got. Right, but they, but the old defence when the referee, the, you know when they used to sing, I got to get this right. No, I won't use the terminology <laughs> because it could be construed a different way. But the referee will give the home side uh, the home advantage. I'm not saying that's correct, but that's the uh, perception. That's but the reality. There's a guy. Well, yeah, maybe a reality. But then in the modern game, there is a guy who is also officiating, who's, <laughs> who's in London, and he's not going to get affected by an irate crowd who could have told the official to go and look at the monitor uh, and potentially send the player off, which he didn't do either, it seems, because otherwise the referee, and I don't believe he was, sent over to the monitor to have a second look. It's, well, kind, of, it's kind of the same as, you know, we're talking on the show about the penalty kicks. Yep. And we were both talking about when you get on the wrong side, mm -hmm. 
you can't make any contact because you can't you don't have an argument right this is the exact same thing when you put your hand <coughs> in somebody's throat i don't care whether you're tickling them or what you're doing the fact that your hands are on his throat is an absolute and utter no-no. Yeah. And you can't defend it. No. And he clearly wasn't thinking of the kids watching at home, Frank. No. Yes, the example. You know, that's true. That's <laughs> true, Kate. But I really think that he didn't get the red card because everything was done, like, in slow motion with very calmness, calmness you know, uh, from, uh, from Van Dijk, that he put his throat, you know, put the guy down. <laughs> the, guy lay, the guy laid down, didn't move. And Van Dyke behaved like nothing happened. So people thought, yeah, okay, that wasn't that bad. So let's carry on. He sold it well. But bad example for the kids. He sold it well. Stevie, with Liverpool in the league title fight with Arsenal and Man City and top four assured, does Klopp use the Europa League to rest some players and make the Premier League a priority? Ooh. Ooh, good question. <laughs> Aye. Because Liverpool are in the Europa League this year. <laughs> no, no. I know now. You keep reminding me. <coughs> oh, that's a toughie, by the way. I'm going to say... I'm going to say if... If if he can do it in certain areas without much of a change... You know, like, a slo don't play slob as I. You can play Elliot. And it's not too big of an impact. I think, I think he might try it. But the problem is, you can't pick and you can't pick and choose when and when you don't win. And I think when you get to this stage Stevie. of the season, you play your best team. Stevie, was it was it a question in our time, your time, and Craig is my and my no. and, and my time no. to to wonder? We're going to play European Cup or Premier League no. or FA Cup. We you no. we wanted to play all, and the, Full and steam the coaches ahead. never wondered. Yeah, exactly. Full steam ahead. So why yeah, it's, now? It's why nowadays you have to think about that? Because that's what they do. You know, it, you know, yeah, people are talking. About, they don't play. People are talking they about don't play Ellen more Harland. game that we used to. No, I know, but it's just yeah, a different mindset now. Like like Haaland, for example. I heard people talking today about. Oh, why well, was Haaland sitting on the bench smiling and he looked like he was joking with his mates and the whole thing. Now, again, in our time, if that had been Kenny Dalglish or, or Ian Rush or, and they were on the bench, I'll tell you what, they'd be creating havoc. They would not. You wouldn't know, the whole place would know. But it's a different mindset now. It's a completely different mindset. You're not playing, I'm going to arrest you. Okay, that's, it's okay. We, we would have been, hold on a second, what are you talking about? Just, it's a different, yeah. they go about it a completely different way. He, he, he'll definitely prioritise, though, the Premier League. I, I think so. Yeah, oh yeah. What you've got to understand now is, the difference is, uh, is the little gremlin in Klopp's ear and every manager's ear, it seems, is something that wasn't there 15 years ago, maybe 10, 15, certainly 20 was sports scientists telling a manager in the morning, every morning, that so-and-so has overplayed, so-and-so has overplayed, and so-and-so is probably going to get an injury if he plays. And that seed of doubt is now in the manager's mind, which it was never... You know, he used to gauge it with... It, it was the eye test. Or the physio got pulled and said, right, what's the scenario with the injured players? And if you... Back in the day, it doesn't seem like 50 years ago, but back in the day before all the sports scientists, you were either fit you in are. training or you were not. Nowadays, even if you're fit, you could be uh, debatable whether you're fit enough, depending what zone you're in, right. with your blood testing and all the things they do, <laughs> the lactic acid. Well, look at Tyler Adams with the US team. He's only allowed to play 39 minutes. <clears throat> Where'd that come from? I mean, who decided, who decided <laughs> that? Clearly wasn't a manager. 39. <laughs> It was 39 minutes. That's that's what they said. But his ceiling. Because he was out for all of the uh... His ceiling was 39 minutes. I mean, really? <laughs> oh, that's insane. The that's scientists. Insane. Scientists. Oh, well, you know what they say yeah. about scientists. Yeah. Who would be the guys signing of the season in the Premier League? Some notable ones are Rice, Palmer, Madison, Kudus and McAllister. Ooh, um... 
Mm. Right. So it's dollar. Well, after eight, the game yeah. tonight, you have to put Palmer. Sorry, sorry. Uh, after the game tonight, you have to put Palmer, but uh, definitely uh, Rice has to be put maybe there because how much he he worked in the middle of the park for the Gunners uh, made the difference this season comparing to last season. So I would say Rice I, and Palmer. I w sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still thinking. All right. It has to be either Palmer or McAllister. Because the money has to come into it. You know, well, let's, the let's be comes, honest. Well, it's 100, you've paid 100 million for Rice. He better be doing his job. You know, he better be for 100 million. And that's got nothing to do with Kai Sado and Enzo Fernandez uh, not Fernandez. doing their job. They were 100 million. But at the end of the day, it's 100 mil. You've got, you've got Palmer and McAllister who both have gone for around about the same type of money. I think Palmer was a little bit more. So I think, listen, I'm, I'm obviously a little bit biased, but I think McAllister... <laughs> McAllister... Well, that's the statement of the year, isn't it? No, but let me tell you why. Holy smokes. But McAllister oh. is involved in the, has been involved in the game for 90 minutes. As great as Cole Palmer is, he disappears at times. But he's, he's only a kid. He's still a young player. Maybe that'll come. So, surprise, surprise, I'm going with McAllister. I would throw in, <laughs> I think kudos for sure. Uh, I would throw in, although he's had the odd injury, uh, if we're bringing the financial side into it as well, has there been a better value for money than Van de Ven at Tottenham? I mean, when he's yeah. not on that side, he's been absolutely outstanding. Hamstring issues apart, he has been a great yep. signing for them. Mm. Now, what's better, I mean, for each team. Uh, Trying to think anywhere else. Not off the top of my head. But yeah, there have been some good signings. So who are you picking? Hey, all right. That's Who's a question, isn't it? <laughs> so you pick McAllister. You pick Palmer. All right. Uh, for for value for money, I'm going to say Van de Ven. Okay. Stevie, why not Pep Linders? Didn't Fagan prove a long-time assistant can be the answer and provide continuity? Also, how did you like Fagan, and what did the players think of him taking the reins at the time? Absolutely. Yeah. No, well, we... Well, Paisley took over from Shankly, so that kind of that kind of broke that stigma. So, it, to everybody, it seemed the logical move. And... I mean, listen, if Joe spoke to you when he was the coach, he was talking to you for a reason, and you listened. Because you knew, you knew what he was talking about. So it never changed when he became the manager. It was the exact same thing. So, yeah, no, it was just seemed the sensible and smart thing to do. Uh, Linders, I would not have argued had he gotten the job or had they come out and said, Pep Linders is going to take over. Because I think I think the players would probably... Actually, let me, let me backtrack a second. I guess it depends on the relationship that Linders has with the players. Let me put it that way. Because if he's too friendly with the players, because there always has to be a, a go-between. Like Paul and I. Paul was always closer to the players than I was. Because I had to cop. be because I had to be that, I had to be the bad cop. <coughs> so it depends. It depends how close Linders is to the players. If he's if you're too close, it doesn't work. But if he wasn't, if he was if he was basically the second coming of Joe Fagan, then I would have no problem with him taking over. Might he be in your top three when you see the, the list of the managers that are in line for it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, honestly, never, I never thought about it previously, so this question there came up. But now that it's come up, I, I would have no problem with it. Have we got a list? Or was we that just, was just that an imaginary list? No, we do have a list. We've had a list on my last show of uh, yeah. Liverpool's... Uh, all, the, the all the odds, the all the odds, and all that. Yeah. yeah. Ah. He's he's on the list though, isn't he? I just can't remember where he is on it. So is Zinedine Zidane. <laughs> ah. Not that he's a bad man. Yeah, not, not. Yeah. Uh, for Craig, start bench or sell Jude Bellingham, Foden, Cole Palmer, based on their current season. 
Uh, wow. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, to be honest, just, uh, I mean, in player level alone, I'm, I'm, I'm selling Cole Palmer. You know, not, but he's been great. Uh, that'd been an easy answer a few weeks ago, wouldn't it? Mm. But they've been Jude Bellingham. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to start Phil Foden. I don't know if I am. Mm. Ben's Bellingham, drop Palmer. Do you agree? No, no, I would, I would start Bellingham and bench Foden. Frank, you get the final say. Yeah, I'm going to go for Jude Bellingham, uh, Foden second, and Palmer. Palmer, he has the disadvantage of playing for a club is mid-table. That's why he's not at the top of the top. But the Bellingham um, influence in the middle of the park has been huge for most of the season for Real Madrid. We are talking about Real Madrid. So Bellingham first, yeah. There is one more question from a big fan. It's uh, from Derek Ray. Mm -hmm. It's going to be for you, Craig. What's Derek's name in German? Is he, he Heinrich Reis. <laughs> Tell me something. <laughs> this, is, this is a burner account, isn't it? No, it's ray.com, look. There's, na there's not... He's not saying... 40 anything. games unbeaten and no sign of a defeat forthcoming. A Leverkusen on current form, the best team in Europe. Regards to my fellow Scots and favourite Frenchman. There's a oh, word for that in Germany. Nice. The best team. What was it? <laughs> that's a little sweetener at the end as well, my <laughs> favourite yeah. Frenchman. Right. Are they the best team in Europe? They're the most informed team in Europe. Right. Well, think back to Arsenal. Ah, uh, we don't know. When they were invincible. Were they the best team in Europe? They didn't win the Champions League. They were just unbeaten in the Premier League. These guys are unbeaten in every single competition. What I'd say is, oh. in England at the moment, we have the best title race out of all the leagues, but in some essence, in Germany, we have maybe the best story. Could that be, both things be true? And they're 13 points ahead of Bayern. Purely in the fact that Bayern <coughs> have been running away with this thing for so long, and where Leverkusen were when Alonso took over, <coughs> and where they are now has been some achievement. Almost as big an achievement as managed to hold on to this cough <laughs> for an eternity. <laughs> <coughs> so I don't know. Could could Wait. they beat Liverpool in the uh, Europa League? Oh yeah, they could, huh? Mm -hmm. Go on, Frank. Lever Lever Leverkusen are 13 points ahead of a team who's still in the Champions League. So it has to count on the on what you want to think about because you're not 13 points ahead in the German <coughs> league against nobody. Uh, the uh, Bayern, where, wherever they are, wherever they are right now, they're still in the Champions League. So it says a lot about the the, the, the power of this Leverkusen team. But yeah, I don't know if they are the best, but they are one of the best for sure. And it's not just the fact that at the top, you know, they've, obviously they, they, they've lost some key players as well, particularly Boniface for a long period. Yeah, Patrick Schick's there. Florian Vertz has been brilliant. Grimaldo on the left side. With so many amazing performances. But how many times have they actually won games later on? Yeah, a lot. That's why you can't, <coughs> it gets to a point where they'll be trailing and yeah. you just still feel they just like they're like the going and keep wrong. going. Like this show. <laughs> <You're gone. coughs> just All right. God, Leverkusen mate. are brilliant. <laughs> but the guys are not going to quite be drawn on saying they're the best team in Europe right now. Sorry, Derek. Uh, Heinrich, his name's Heinrich. All oh, right, sorry, Heinrich. Heinrich Reis. Thanks he's so tweeted. Much. He's tweeted that from Germany, <laughs> from Cologne. 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 Craig, come on. Hmm. Cologne. Thanks so much for sending in your questions. We'll be back tomorrow to do it all over again.